Hey everyone, Jacob here. Today's video, I'm going to go over the behind the scenes of the tennis short that uh, my buddy Sam and I did, along with my uh, fiance Kat. We were itching to get out and do a little short film of some sorts, and very last minute, we decided, uh, hey, let's go do a tennis thing, because the weather was grayed out and we like playing tennis. The easiest way for me to break down this video would basically going through pre-production, production, and post-production of how I made this video. So for pre-production, uh, there wasn't a whole lot. Uh, typically, you can write up, draw out, do a whole storyboard for a video project of some kind, but this was more on the side of, let's just go film something because we kind of miss filming. Sam is an actor, as you can see by his lovely face expressions. Uh, <laughs> Go check Sam out at his channel, which is down below. Sam is a great actor. He's been in tons of plays and theater productions and also commercials and some short films as well. Serve. <laughs> you hit it back. I can do a approach shot. Yeah. Well, I got pulling you in support, so. But you can do like a, like a short, a tight angle approach. Yeah, like a short. Up. So like a short shot. Yeah, so you hit it back, and then I come in, and yeah. it's like, oh, wow. And when we do that shot, we'll have the camera just on you, but I'll throw the ball so it doesn't actually, like, okay. I'm not going to hit it from a rack. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's going to hurt. If so. you happen to hit me, we get the perfect shot. That's yeah. okay. For production, which was when we got to the court, we had a couple challenges that we knew we were gonna face, because there was only three of us. Originally, I wanted to just run camera, just film, but we didn't have another tennis player. Thankfully though, for the shots that I was in, Cat would run camera, and <laughs> that helped us a whole lot. Two, one, action. Oh, I actually reached for that one. <laughs> that was good. That, that was great from this that angle. That was good from here too. Ah, that was good. <laughs> So the fun part about this tennis thing was the story we kind of came up with on the fly, which was basically, okay, you have your protagonist, your antagonist, and I'm playing the antagonist, and uh, Sam is playing the protagonist. And the whole premise of the story is very, very simple. It's just, in tennis, there's this, there is this thing called the changeover, where after a game has been played, it's time to change sides or the changeover. And a lot of times during this, tennis players will take a few moments uh, to gather themselves and get ready for the next game. So Sam and I wanted to illustrate that a little bit. The second challenge we had, we were shooting this at one in the afternoon. So sun was like directly overhead. Be beautiful day out, like to actually play tennis, but for camera, not so much. You can see the highlights in my eyes, my eyebrows, even when it is color graded, that they're kind of blown out a little bit. But thankfully the camera was able to hold up and we were filming with the Canon EOS R50, which is actually what I'm filming on right now. I just have a different lens on it. The lens though we were filming with was actually, this is one of my new little toys, I guess, is, uh, a Rokinon Cinema Lens, uh, 35 millimeter. Uh, this little lens is sweet. I actually got it uh, used, which I'll make a video on this later because buying used glass is typically something I'm not a fan of. But this guy was pretty much out of the box condition used. So there wasn't any nicks or scrapes or anything wrong with it. It just had been Used a few times and then throw it back in the box. I've used a lot of Rokinon lenses in my past for film school, so this is very, uh, this feels like riding a bike for me at, when it comes to camera lenses, especially cinema lenses. The problem I ran into was on my little Canon R50 is that their mounting systems are different. So as you can see here, here's a typical Canon lens and they got the connectors and that kind of stuff there and these this guy has nothing there's a setting in the camera that you have to switch uh, 
on, which is release shutter without lens. What that does is it's telling the camera to record video or shoot pictures without a lens on. And the reason why you have to do that is because it doesn't register this lens with it. Uh, moving on to uh, post-production, there's a certain color uh, setting you could put with Canon R50. I think it's like HDR. That kind of gives you raw footage that you can play around with more in color grading. Now, I have color graded a lot of footage over the last few years, and color grading this was actually very pleasing. So the color tones I was giving this was kind of a slightly more teal orange kind of look, just because I was wearing this uh, greenish teal shirt, we're on these blue and green courts, got the red hair and the yellow tennis balls, and then Sam has the uh, black shirts and the white hat and the white shoes and the blue racket. So that color information I thought worked really well for kind of the thing I was going for. After that, you get a little bit of the heartbeat of when uh, Sam gets spiked by the ball, by me, the antagonist, because red hair are bullies in like every movie. So Sam then has his main moment, which was just one long shot that slowly pushes in to kind of show that, okay, he's thinking, he's trying to get over the nerves that's in him, trying to get either get over, trying to get over the anger and frustration with the guy spiking him and then giving him a dirty look uh, before the changeover. Which in tennis, there's a lot of that kind of stuff. So after Sam recollects himself and he's ready to go, I uh, got some pump up music to kind of show that, all right, he's winning points, he's crushing it, he's getting rid of the ginger. One of the final shots that I had in my head was this slow motion shot of an ace uh, for his serve. The execution, uh, I think it worked. I was using, um, actually it's the lens that's on this guy. It's a uh, 20, or 10 to 20 lens, so it's a it's kind of a fisheye lens. It's really wide, it shows everything. Versus like the 35 millimeter is very tight, very, very real life, where what you're looking at is kind of the way our eyes see in a way, is the uh, 35 millimeter. Once you get to 24, things start to get morphed a little bit, and then under 24, things get fisheye and really out of proportion. I was able to add this lens distortion curvature thing, and what that does is make this warpiness wrap around as if time is really slowing down. Sam's super dialed in and he's just going to ace the stir, which he does. The way the shot looks in reality is like this, where uh, very wide open, you can see the clouds, you can see the buildings in the background and the whole court, but I crank that curvature really high to warp the sides and you get this schmear super fast looking effect and then i have that all time out with the music as well so that's kind of how we made the cinematic uh tennis shorts called the changeover uh special thanks to sam again uh it was a blast filming with him he always has good ideas and really good energy on set so i think we're gonna try to film some more stuff in the future so yeah thanks for watching I uh, appreciate the support, and uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys next time. One. <laughs> God damn <laughs> what, did, what did you do? You threw a tennis ball at his butt. Tennis ball. Right. Okay, again, again, again. I was again. wondering what you were doing. Again, 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 again. There we go. There we go.